Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez back again. All this week there's been a lot of talk about getting a relatively good neutral black and white or as it should be actually called monochrome print. Now, what's happening I think is that people just don't understand how difficult it is to do this. Okay, there are reasons behind that. Think about it. If you were just dealing with a perfectly neutral dye and you could dilute it so that you can achieve, say, every shade of gray from black almost to pure white, it would be simple. But that's not the case. You're dealing with an ink set composed of CMYK and sometimes red, blue, green, orange. Depending on the type of a printer you are using, it will have a different ink palette now when you print let me give you a little bit of a background when you print on a inkjet printer and you're printing with an rgb file okay and you tell say the printer that you want to print that in black and white well the printer driver is actually converting that image to a black and white image now you have another choice that you can do and in photoshop you can do this rather easily also in lightroom you can just turn it into a monochrome what it does it gets rid of the color basically is it's a different it's a different situation than say for instance just desaturating your image completely so once you do that then you are sending a file to the printer that every one of those values has equal RGB. In other words, 33, 33, 33, 100, 100, 100, 250, 250, 250. There is no change in that RGB channel value. All of them are equal. So therefore, every single value you send over to your printer is actually neutral, okay? It has no color cast whatsoever, okay? Now, people are also erroneously thinking that when you print monochrome, your monitor has to be absolutely perfectly calibrated. Well, in a way, yes, because you want to look at your monochromes on your screen and you want them to appear neutral and not have, say, a violet cast or some other kind of cast. So it helps. But when you're converting an image to monochrome, it really doesn't matter any longer how it looks on your monitor. If your monitor is a little bit off, your white point is a little bit off, it's not going to really affect the way that the printer attempts to, say, translate that list of values that it receives and tell the print engine how to properly utilize all the colors that that ink palette offers you to create a set of neutral values from black all the way to white. Now, most printers, yeah, most printers, if you have a, say, a paper made for it and a very good ICC profile, usually provided to you by the printer manufacturer when you download the driver, you should get a relatively neutral result. And I say relatively because they may not be and you may be also looking at your print under a different type of light with a different color temperature. Your results are going to look slightly different depending how you view your image. Uh, most professional level, especially people that do art restoration or not art restoration, but art reproduction, that's it. They have a viewing booth with a temperature control light source. That's the only light source they use to verify whether a print from a piece of art has been reproduced correctly. We're just dealing with monochrome here, not colors. That's even more difficult. So let's just look at a few printers. Pro 100, right off the bat, many people complained that it was producing slightly greenish looking black and white prints. Okay. The XP15000, 
I don't think I did a black and white print right off the bat because within a week I was already refilling it with precision colors inks. It produces a bit of a color cast. Yes, it does. The ET8550 behind me, yeah. It could, under certain conditions, depending on the paper you're using, produce a monochrome with a slight color cast. If you're dealing with something, oh, God forbid, a Pro 1, that Pro 1 had three different gray tones plus two blacks. Oh, monochrome prints were majestic on that printer. Yeah, you still needed a good profile, though. And the Pro 1000, again, wonderful. The P800, the same thing. Uh, but you have to do things correctly. So let's look at what we need to do to be able to produce a black and white or monochrome that under most lighting conditions, and remember, they will look different depending on whether you look at the print under daylight, say a north-facing window, a south-facing window, lights from your home. Everybody now has these fluorescent light bulbs, these LED light bulbs. They all have different color temperatures. So be very aware of this, that your monochrome is going to look different depending how you view it. Let's take a quick look at these two samples. So I have a double sample here. This is done on a sub gloss paper, Ecotank 8550. I just basically loaded a black and white test image and a color test image. Let's look at that in the correct orientation. Let me back up. And as you can see, the black and white to me looks neutral. To you, maybe yes, maybe no. You know, this camera is only $65. I've been attempting to get the color balance correctly, so you'll have to forgive me. But when I look at this in person, it looks neutral to me. Okay. So how did I achieve this? I used a custom ICC profile. Okay. A sub does not provide a profile for the 8550. So I'm out of luck. But if I'm working with a paper that is listed on the 8550's driver media drop-down menu, then I can also then link that particular paper to its ICC profile that should have been installed along with that driver. Now, when you're printing RGB, okay, you're gonna need a good profile. You're gonna convert it to black and white and then Still pick that profile in your driver. Make sure that when you're telling your printing application, you're going to print with it controlling color. You have to turn off color management in the driver. It's a must. You cannot have both at the same time. A lot of people forget that. On a Canon printer, it's a little bit tricky because it's kind of hidden. You have to find it. On Windows, there's a little block when you go to your printer's preferences that says color slash intensity manual adjustment. Click on that, open it again, and then go to matching and choose none, okay? Or if you want to be lazy and let the printer driver handle color, you can choose ICM and then turn the application off. In other words, tell it you don't want any control. Let the driver do the job. I tend to use my application in most cases. I also use QImage. And I just tell QImage, hey, suggest a profile. And it will show me the actual profile for that particular paper. As long as I'm using a Canon paper on a Canon printer and an Epson paper in an Epson printer, it will tell me this is the profile you should use. I open it up. In other words, I attach it and I click OK. We're printing in relative colorimetric rendering intent all the time. We're printing with black point compensation all the time as well. And that's it. I get this. In this particular case, because it was a sub paper, I made a profile. And I used Ultra Premium Paper Glossy as the paper choice. Okay? And high quality. I then proceeded to scan the set of patches. You've seen them before. And produced my profile. I then told Q Image, hey, I want you to print these two images. On my ASUP paper, I'm going to choose Ultra Premium Paper Glossy 
because that's what I used to produce this particular profile. Please suggest a profile. Well, I worded my profile very similar to the wording that Epson uses for EcoTank profiles, and there it was among that list. I chose it, and I told her, go ahead, OK, and OK. When I did that, it turned off color management in the driver. I did not have to think about it. It did it for me automatically. Okay, you don't believe me? Let's go ahead and do one right now on the spot as we are filming. We're gonna go ahead and create this again, okay? So let's click over to the screen and we'll go into QImage and proceed. 17 printers now, folks. Now, first on clock job tonight at 9 p.m. Yes, we know that. So I have certain certain printers uh, being um, scheduled to print those unclogged tools. Keeps them nice and happy. All right, so let's go ahead and check our situation here. Now, I originally did something to make it easier for me to be able to do these kinds of tests. I set up QImage with a certain set of values or settings, and that's available right here. In order for you to do this, all you have to do is click on that little save button and whatever settings you have here already prepared will be saved. So let's go to my 8550A sub and eight and a half by 11 custom ICC profile and boom. But I want to be able to print both images. So let's go ahead and tell in the prints tab that I wanna make five by sevens. So I can actually fit two five by sevens in a eight and a half by 11 and boom. That's all we need to do. Now we can go ahead and print, but let's double check everything to make sure that that saved set of settings was actually opened up and restored basically correctly. 8550 ultra premium photo paper glossy, eight and a half by 11 rear paper feeder. And here is my profile. Epson ET 8550A sub chart 400 patches and that was the day that I created it. That's it. That's all you have to do. Watch this. I can print that now and when it emerges it should match the one that I just showed you. So we're going to go ahead and come back to Q image now. Let's go ahead and remove all of this and I'm just going to give you one other different option here that you can use if you still want to print monochrome. Let's just pick one of these images here from Australia. We're going to go ahead and choose, say, a bit of a border, maybe 0.25. That will be a quarter inch all around. And we'll go ahead and let's see. How about this? Undo crop. We want the whole image to be printed, but this is in color. So what we do is this, we're gonna come back, hit on properties, and here we're going to choose black and white. When we do that, unlike any other program, it's going to actually turn the image black and white for you. Make doubly sure that before you print, you run and also check. Make sure you're Print head is fully cleared before you begin printing any kind of important test or job, okay? That will save you a lot of headaches later down the road. So this print that is coming out at this very second should match the previous one that I did yesterday, okay? It should match it perfectly. Now, I could save that job so that I can repeat that test say six months from now to make sure that as I add new ink that I buy from Epson, I can go ahead and compare to see if there's any drifting in the output accuracy of the new inks. For instance, they cannot be made exactly the same as previous batches. They may differ slightly. They may not differ enough for you to be able to discern a difference, but it could happen. So it pays for you to do this say every six months just save that job and then repeat it every six months or so 
And here we go, we're getting the results here pretty soon. We'll get this one ready to show you all. So remember, this is the one I did a day or so ago. We'll put it here and we'll compare it to this one. It should be basically identical. And then the next one that comes out should be the black and white version that we used black and white mode in the driver. So here's one thing you have to remember. Black and white mode is different than printing a color image that has been turned to black and white and then you're still using a profile you're actually you're actually printing full rgb mode you're going to need a good profile otherwise you may not get a neutral final print when you choose black and white mode in the driver and key image converts that image for you visually so you now see it in black and white if you forget to turn that off then the next time you turn key image on every color image you load will be displayed to you in black and white so keep that in mind make sure you go back to color in the driver almost done here so when you print in black and white mode there is no color management involved okay you're printing with no icc profile you're letting your black and your gray inks and a tiny little bit of yellow and magenta i believe is the one that will be utilized the most remember that dye black ink is actually like a very deep purple optically it's closer to blue than anything else let's see what we got here so again i don't want to do a sleight of hand this is the one we just printed so this is today let me make sure that i got this oriented correctly oh i flipped the images sorry about that but anyway as you can see let me back up this has had a day to age, I guess you can say. Let's put the images together. Remember, dye inks, as they dry, may, depending on the paper, may have a slight color shift, okay? The only inks that just don't change are pigment inks. So we're dealing with dye here. This is what most people are having problems with. So it is a match, and then of course we'll do the color one. Remember, on top, and that, stay still. And that is also a match. But the fact that we got a neutral, this is the one we just did today. A neutral black and white, where are my lights? There we go, look at that. Now you might ask yourself, well, I kind of see like a, a slight tone of this and that, well, as long as that tone is global throughout and doesn't change, you can adjust that in black and white mode. That is printing right now. What we will do is go back to Q image. I will show you the adjustments that you can make. Let's analyze this first and see what we got. So black and white mode or advanced black and white in some Epson printers, it depends what printer you're in. Also Canon printers also have that mode as well. So. Again, it's a no profile, no basic color management as we know it utilized. It's just basically attempting to print what it receives with the inks it has, and you adjust a global tone if need be. In fact, you could make a sepia tone print if you so wish. I would do that probably on a nice texture watercolor paper that has a warm base to begin with. Also, remember, paper bases, there are different colors. Some of them are neutral, white. Some of them are very fluorescent. They have OBAs, optical brightening agents. And so they will look different under certain types of lights. The more UV the light has, the more brighter or more fluorescent uh, the look will be. And so a natural paper with zero OBAs on a regular, and no, it doesn't even have a white, uh, maybe a clay layer or anything like that underneath the coating it may look duller than a paper with OBAs, of course. So you're, you're simply looking for the overall look, okay? And remember that it's extremely difficult to get a linearly neutral result when you're dealing with monochrome, okay? It is. Slight little variations and changes 
just get completely hidden when you print color. Especially most people like to oversaturate their prints when they're editing. I know, I know. Everyone does that, including me sometimes. So I believe the driver is actually doing a full conversion to a black and white, just like Photoshop does, just like Lightroom does. It's not simply desaturating it. And remember, once you do that, you are out of the color management ballpark. Now you're dealing with manual adjustments yourself. It's going to do the best job it can. You see mostly your blacks and your grays. So the more grays you have, the more likely you will get a very nice result. If you really want perfection, well, then you need an Epson printer that's refillable. And you need to buy the Piesography inks, all black inks from Inkjet Mall or Cone Color. That's the only way. That way you will be dealing with no color inks, only blacks and grays. Okay. And you need a RIP software to be able to print. You cannot do it with your driver any longer and you will need curves. They're sort of like profiles, but not quite. And you need one for each type of paper you use. Yeah. Well, so here we go. I was going to say, so even though it sounds wonderful and they actually advertise it as the best way to allow you to produce near perfect monochromes, setting it up is, is not easy. All right. So let's take a look at this. So you're going to look at this, not in the crappy lighting I have here. You're going to go to a control area with control lighting. Look at this and determine do I see a cast? Does it look slightly magenta? Does it look slightly whatever the color? Then find that that bad cast on that color wheel and go in the opposite direction, a tiny amount. That's it. And reprint it. And then compare the two again. What you need is a control gray. You need something that is actually absolutely neutral gray. Remember the 18% gray cards? Those were available. And I think there's, they still are. So if you have one of those on your viewing booth, if you will, you're going to lay that down and then you're going to lay your print next to it and compare. You should be able to instantly see your color cast because you have a control right next to it. And then just go the opposite on your adjustment. Once you arrive at the two or three, four tries, you finally nailed it. And of course, you can also do contrast, brightness, Remember, yeah, all kinds of different global adjustments. No more ICC profiles when you print in black and white mode or advanced black and white. And then in QImage, you just save it and you can recall it. If you have five different papers, you're going to have to repeat that process five different times and then save each, each combination that produces the perfect results. You save each one, give it a name that you can then in your mind, you know exactly what that name means. And then you can recall it anytime you want to print black and white. Just make sure you tell the driver, advanced black and white, Q image will automatically show you the image in black and white. Now, let's open up Q image again and you'll see that my image, anything I open, will be in black and white at this point. Let's go ahead and remove this. Let's load this sunset. Boom, black and white. Let's load this uh, gorgeous sunset of some blue and black and white again. And, and, oh yeah, black and white again and so forth. You can see. So that is something that they just added. So in order to get out of this mode, you have to get out of black and white mode. So go back in your printer driver and switch over to what? Color. Done. And now when you load, see that? It fixed something. You saw that little warning up here or that little message. Now we're back to viewing our images in full color, unless, of course, they are black and white to begin with. That one looks black and white, but it is not. It is actually a color image. Let me go over a couple of the choices that you may have. Now, again, I always suggest that you start at neutral and darker. But I want you to look at these examples here. As I change to lighter, in other words, if you start off with this, you would get this. Normal. 
It's a near match, but it's a little bit lighter than this. So again, this makes no sense at all, but you know, just make sure that you follow this. Now watch, when I go to darker, it matches. See what I mean? So it's, it's a bit weird, but you know, what can I say? Darkest, now it's a shade darker than the original. So we're gonna keep it on darker. Now let's go ahead and change the tone. So neutral is what we always begin with, unless you purposely want to make something cool. You'll see that. Notice what happened to our pointer. It used to be situated in the central zero point. It moved over to the blue and cyan region, okay? You can do that manually. You can actually reduce that to a slightly less bluish tone. Let's go ahead and change it to something else. Warm. And it moves it over toward the yellow. And adds a little bit of a, like a brownish tone. A little bit of yellow and red. Okay. So we moved over horizontally 4 and vertically 20. Sepia. That's real brown. But actually it doesn't come out that sepia, if you will. It's a little bit more subdued. So here we moved way over to the northeast, if you will. Yellow and the red zone. And that's the tone we added. Okay. So if you set this back to zero, you'll be back to your normal neutral setting. We'll set this to neutral again. And, I, and remember, you can actually adjust this by increments. So it may take you a few prints, a few attempts to reach that magic goal where you're now consistently on that particular paper. The moment you change papers, it's going to start all over again, this adjustment period. So once you arrive at a point where everything is perfect, you can save that setting in QImage. That's, I tell you, that's out of this world, okay? So once you do that, you save that setting, now your printer is consistently putting out perfectly linearly neutral black and whites or monochromes. Recall. Okay, that's it. Even in the dark room when we were printing with black and white film on black and white paper, you didn't necessarily get a neutral black and white print. The paper base had a bit of a color value to it the type of emulsion produced maybe a slightly not neutral result yeah the only time we actually began to get fully neutral prints was when digital photography came in and good printers such as the ones we are using presently were made available otherwise it was kind of a dream okay so remember Black and white mode, no ICC profiles. It is not color managed. You do the managing yourself. If you have a color image, you convert it to black and white and you want to use a profile, it better be a darn good one. Otherwise, you're just not going to get full neutrality. Okay? That's a simple fact. If you are getting like very strong cast, your, your settings are wrong. Something is not right. That's why I always recommend Q image. It takes care of all of the mistakes that I used to make all the time when I was double profiling everything. My driver was controlling color and my printing application was controlling color. And I was so proud that I was using the proper paper. It matches the one that I'm actually loading on the printer. Plus I'm using the proper profile, but I forgot to tell the driver to turn off color management. That will produce a color cast, okay, big time. Okay, so keep that in mind. Don't pull your hair out. This is nothing to, you know, go crazy about. If you still, even with a good profile, are getting what you consider to be a color cast, go to black and white mode, use advanced black and white, and manually adjust. Um, try to migrate away from these plugins that Canon and Epson provides you. Learn to do things properly through the printing application or the editing application you own. Uh, you know, they're doing things behind your back and they do not explain what they are doing behind your back. So you never really learn what it takes to produce something, whether it's a neutral color print or a neutral monochrome print. 
okay? Learn how to use the drivers, learn how to use the application you're printing with, and of course, I recommend always QImage Ultimate or QImage One if you're a Mac user. It will handle that color management malarkey for you automatically. Plus, if you choose black and white mode, you will see all your images in black and white. Just don't forget to set it back to color. All right. Thank you so much. Or, oh, or else everything else from that point onward will be printed in monochrome. Keep that in mind. You don't want to waste paper that way. All right. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. And as always, happy printing, everybody. Bye-bye.